let's get into what's quickly becoming my favorite segment, Magic the Card Gathering. And this is right. where Peach delves into the vaults, the coffers, the pelf, the unending store of magic wow, cards. Get on, yeah. <laughs> get oh, on the yeah. Google machine, kids. What were those words? <laughs> the English teacher is coming out, ladies and gentlemen. He digs into his treasure trove to pull out some of his favorite magic cards to talk a little bit about magic history and, and some fun moments for our team. What do you got for us today, Peach? Walk us through it. Hey, all right. So Magic the Card Gathering, you know, we've got the five kind of like segments that get us through here. We're going to start out today with background crasher. And this is basically just uh, somebody interesting that shows up in the back of an Orlando Magic card. I noticed when I was going through my collection, there happens to be a lot of other greats that kind of make their way into, into cards. So I've got the uh, an NBA Hoops Nick Anderson card right here. And uh, this is this is one of my favorite photos because John Stockton is just getting rejected by Nick Anderson. And it's always like nice to see a guard getting a block. It's a rare thing. But uh, it's also, you know, an NBA Hall of Famer um, just just getting swatted by Nick Anderson. Just just get out of here. What are you even doing in the lane, little man? And he just I, I, it's a it's a great car. It's, a, it's uh, Nick's third year with the Magic was coming up. And uh, so in his second season. He just gave the swap down to John Stock and let him know, hey, I'm going to be in the backcourt here for Orlando for a while, so don't, don't bring that weak game in here. I love that it's a defensive card. You don't see that much yeah. on, a, on, a, on, a, on a card. You know, we got the, the in-the-shot action, a dunk. Maybe they're down in the – you do see a defensive stance ready. You know, that's a good shot, but you never see a block. That's nice. And we don't think Nick Anderson always defense, but hell of a defender. That's a nice card, Peach. Well, he in this year where they took the – he only had 44 blocks that season, so this was one. <laughs> so there weren't a ton. Like I say, guards don't usually get a lot of blocks, but they happen to capture one. And I like to try to pull cards with a fun picture or something that's a little different than what you normally see, like a guy just dribbling the ball standing there. Like, you've seen that. So I'm trying to bring a little something else to the game. Mm -hmm. Now we're, now we're going to move on to rookies. And uh, I've selected this – man who has just announced his retirement from the NBA, that's J.J. Redick from obviously a photo shoot because I don't know how much he went up for two-handed dunks. <laughs> but there he is, 06, 07 NBA rookie, J.J. Redick. Um, I disliked him thoroughly when this card came out um, because I was a North, I'm a North Carolina guy and I didn't like him from his days at Duke. But as we discussed on an earlier pod, he kind of won me over at a certain point. And went on to be probably one of the better Magic draft picks of the, you know, since Dwight Howard, um, as far as having a good long career, uh, was very productive for a lot of different teams. Um, he had a 15 year career. He had uh, six years with the Magic, which was his longest stint, consecutive stint with any team. But I feel like he kind of peaked probably when he was with the Sixers, I would say. Um, but I think he had a nice career considering how hard he had to work to adapt his game. I mean, he was the best player in college basketball and then gets drafted by the magic kind of late and has to kind of find his own game and become a different player. And he got so much better defensively in his you know, later years, being able to keep himself on the floor for something other than shooting threes. So an impressive career. I tip the hat to JJ Redick. He's got a podcast. I know you like, I've heard a couple episodes. Um, so check that out, but hats off hats off because I, well, I can't actually take it off your hats off to, to Mr. JJ Redick on a fine career. Your thoughts yeah. about Mr. Redick. The, the old man in the three is the name of his podcast. I believe he's definitely not the last we've seen of JJ Redick. He's going to have a long career in podcasting and media. It seems like he really is hitting a stride with that. I agree with you. I mean, I, I was not stoked about JJ coming out and I think a lot of magic fans may have felt the same way. And that's partially because he rode the bench and he couldn't really get, he couldn't really break the rotation and shout out to Phil from locked on magic heard on his podcast, talking about an interesting story about how JJ really wanted to request a trade. And Otis Smith said, you know, wait it out, give us one more year. And that's kind of when he broke through. And as a, as I've grown when I was, I was much younger. So I had more, vitriolic emotion back then towards this pick but now that i'm older i can appreciate the hard work that he put in and what it 
what it amounted to and how it really paid dividends in the length of his career. And now I'm definitely proud to say that he has been an Orlando Magic because he's he's around to stay and and it's kind of cool that he, a big part of his career was with our franchise. So definitely uh, stoked for JJ. I wonder if no, no, he he won't get hit into the Ring of Honor. I don't know. I, I don't I don't know if he'll get any recognition in Orlando at all in terms of a, oddly as a wrestling level. fan the minute you mentioned ring of honor my head went somewhere else and i was confused <laughs> i was because i'd love to see jj wrestling wrestle a match <laughs> i'd love to see him wrestle a match against somebody but I, that's not what you're talking about no he's not going on the ring of fame he wasn't around long enough didn't do enough things but still a nice a nice player when he was there and uh respect shown all right let's move on to uh they played in orlando which is a category where i show you a guy that you're like oh yeah or mm, i did not know that so don't be fooled by the Rockets logo on the bottom because he got traded in the off season. Uh, but there's Tyrone Liu. You may know him as a coach, but uh, there he is. He suited up one season for the Orlando Magic in 03 to 04, played 76 games, averaged a career high 10.5. And then they traded him to Houston. Like I said, he was a part of that, that big deal that Sacatino Mobley and Steve Francis come over and uh, we shipped off Tracy McGrady and, and Tyrone Liu and then uh, a couple others, I believe. Uh, going that way where we did not get the best of that trade i will just say that <laughs> but tyrone lou mostly known for his coaching but had another had a great career with us last last week i had done steve kerr so there's another former coach that played for the magic <laughs> if we only we could get these good coaches to coach for us <laughs> maybe we gotta take them out of the uniform and just be like yo we're gonna need you back here in a suit because <laughs> i was gonna say if if our player farm system could be as good as our coaching farm system We'd have won a couple of championships by now based on your, who the hell are they played in Orlando segment. You're not wrong on that. <laughs> uh, let's, let's keep it moving now to who the hell is this, which is my attempt at finding an obscure player that you've never heard of. And man, I think I've really nailed it. I could have saved this one for a rookies, <laughs> but I decided not to. I have found Mr. Brian Evans. What? Now, if anyone knows who Brian Evans is, you're probably related to him. Now, this is <laughs> Brian Evans. He was the 27th overall uh, pick in the 96 draft uh, from Indiana. He was the Big Ten Player of the Year, and he was the first player to lead Indiana in scoring under Bobby Knight. So, I mean, there was high hopes for this guy, but it didn't really last. I've got something here for you. He played 102 career games, only 58 with the Magic. And right, right now, he, so his career ended early, but right now, don't feel bad for him. He co-owns a medical supply company in Indiana, so he's doing okay. But Brian Evans, a first-round pick that didn't come through, but that's what happens when you get those late first-round picks because you had a good season the season before, and that's what happens. It's okay. But Brian Evans, he's a, he was a thing. If you have a Brian Evans jersey, you're a bigger Orlando Magic fan than I've ever even thought about being, or you're related to him. That's always always an asterisk next to that one. If you're related to him, you can always get get here i guess he really couldn't thrive in the nba he needed a a, a a coach to throw a chair at him perhaps like risk a choking you know it wasn't he it, it just they weren't holding him to a high enough standard in the nba that's probably what happened there yeah so if tyrone lou would have been there to coach or, or or steve kerr as we discussed maybe he would have been a little motivated to keep it going but i, I didn't expect you to have a lot of thoughts on brian evans because i knew this would be the first time you've heard of him <laughs> oh i just had a thought on bobby knight that's all i had for you <laughs> yeah no, that's good that's a good reference point because i know that all happened before you were born so <laughs> uh all right so lastly we've got our stat of the week and honestly, I don't know if this guy's come up on the podcast yet, but he should. Because I'm about to wax poetic about him for a bit. Here's Terry Catledge. Ooh. Terry Catledge was the leading scorer for the Magic in their first season. 19.4 points a game, including 149-point effort in there. As you can see right here, he wore the number 33, which is why when Shaquille O'Neal was drafted, he went away from his 33 that he wore at LSU and moved to 32 out of respect for this guy. He was on the original Orlando Magic team. He was one of our main leaders. This guy could score inside. What a great player. This is actually the McDonald's upper deck set. Um, this is a pretty rare set that was sold only in the Orlando area. There's a Shaquille O'Neal rookie in this one that has a, a high value, but this was the team set McDonald's upper deck um, from Shaq's rookie year. 
but there's Terry. Terry Catman Catledge was his nickname. Uh, back in 1989, when they started the team, they only sold gear of two guys, Reggie Theus, who's another great player I'll mention on a future show, and Terry Catman Catledge. My dad selected that Terry Catman Catledge hat. It was one of the best moves he ever made because after we went to a game, a few days later, we were over by a bank, and who pulls up to deposit his Orlando Magic check probably? Terry Catman Catledge. No. He waved me and my dad over. Waved me and my dad over, signed my dad's hat, shook my hand. My hand disappeared. I was a 10-year-old boy meeting Terry Catledge. This, uh, let me get the stats on Catledge. He's a big dude, 6'8", 230, and just couldn't have been nicer from his convertible car just saying hi to us while he's at the bank. And uh, that was a pretty cool moment. And I think that was the moment that really solidified, oh, yeah, I like the Celtics back in, 89, in the late 80s, but uh, you know what? I'm a Magic fan now. <laughs> I'm all in. So Terry Catman College is a special spot in my heart, and he should in all Orlando Magic fans. Leading scorer in the very first season of the Orlando Magic. The other guy I mentioned, Reggie Theus, he was second. So they chose the right two guys to make gear of. Wow. That's what, a, a, that's, what a story. That's magic to card gathering. I've got tales, I friend. I love this segment, <laughs> man. It, it knows no end. It just keeps getting better. How do you do it? Uh, you know, I, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I do get, I do see things a lot and it think, makes me think of a story. Um, most, that's why I like to decorate places, you know, like this, almost every sign, banner, jersey, something like that. You see it, you think about it, it, you have a story. And when I was a kid collecting cards, I would remember the times, you know, I'm putting them in a binder, or I'm putting in a top loader and like, oh, I love this card and you just take them to school sometimes, show them to friends. So I love things that trigger moments. And these things really trigger a lot of Orlando magic moments for me. So I wanted to make it a part of the show. Well, man, you are a great storyteller. That's why I'm so excited to be meeting up with you every other week and, and talking basketball and Orlando magic and a little bit about our lives as cousins. 